let's go through the closing process. We want to move from the adjusted trial balance to the post-closing trial balance. So this is our adjusted trial balance and we know once we're at this stage we're ready to prepare the financial statements. So here we can see we have to prepare the financial statements in a certain specified order. We start with the income statement, then we go to the statement of owner's equity, then from that we go to the balance sheet and there's a certain reason why we go in this order. First of all with the income statement we're going to accumulate all of the revenue. Next we're going to deduct all of the expenses and that will yield net income. Next we prepare the statement of owner's equity. We can see that we have owner's capital of $30,000 and now to that we are going to add the accumulation of owner's wealth from the operations of the business the net income of $3,785. This will give us a total of all of the increases to owner's wealth during the period, but we also have to take into consideration the withdrawal by the owner of $200, and so we have to show the withdrawal so that decreases the owner's wealth. And so we can see the owner's equity balance is $33,585. Well, not only will this be shown on the statement of owner's equity, as we use this statement to calculate what the ending owner's equity will be, it also will be on the balance sheet. So this will be our owner's equity on the balance sheet. Here we have all of the items, the assets on the adjusted trial balance on the balance sheet, and we have all of the liabilities on the balance sheet. So we add the liabilities and owner's equity. We see that it's $42,745 and this equals our total assets. So now let's look at, we have an adjusted trial balance. Now we haven't prepared any journal entries. We've just prepared the financial statements. So now we have to go from the owner's capital amount that's presently in the general ledger of $30,000. Now we have to get to the proper amount that should be in owner's equity for them at the end of the month of $33,585. Well, how do we get there? We get there by doing the closing entry. So here we have the adjusted trial balance and over here to the right are the closing entries. The first step in closing the books is to debit all of the revenue accounts and close them out. So we're going to debit the consulting revenue, debit the rental revenue, and we're going to use a temporary account called the income summary in order to accumulate the information just related to the income statement. So only income statement accounts will be closed to income summary and the total of those uh, two accounts is $8,150. Now how does that affect what is in the trial balance or what we I'm mean the general ledger rather and what we have is the T accounts well we can see by debiting consulting revenue which originally had a credit balance our balance has gone to zero by debiting rental revenue our balance in revenue has gone to zero so we have zeroed out or closed these accounts with a closing entry and we can see that the temporary account that we're using to close all the income accounts to has a balance, a credit balance in it of $8,150. Next, our next closing entry we will want to perform will be to credit all of the expenses to zero them out. Remember, um, income statement accounts are temporary accounts. They're just used to accumulate owner's wealth. So at the end of the financial period, we are going to close out these accounts in order to calculate owner's wealth. So here, we are going to be crediting all of the expense accounts and we will be debiting income summary. Again, income summary just used for income statement accounts. Let's see what this effect is on the T accounts. This is the journal entry. Now we can see that all our expense accounts have a zero balance. So we've closed them out 
by crediting them. So normally expenses have a debit balance. We've closed them with a credit and we've also closed this amount to income summary. So we have an income summary, an ending balance of $3,785 once we take into consideration the closing entry associated with revenue and the closing entry associated with the expenses. Well this amount seems somewhat familiar because when we have our income statement we can see that that represents net income. So now what we have in the income summary account is the balance or what's attributable to net income. So now we want to close out this account, this temporary account that we're using to calculate uh, what the owner's uh, accumulation of wealth is in reference to operations. So now we want to close this income summary account. So now it has a credit balance. So we will have to debit it. And then we are going to close this amount out to, to capital. So income summary will be debited. It has a credit balance here. So our closing entry will be to debit it to have a zero balance. And we're going to close this out to capital. So we have an ending balance at present in capital of 33785 Let's go back to the statement of owner's equity, the preparation of our financial statements, and we can see that this subtotal of accumulation of all of the owner's wealth, all of the additions, is also represented in the T accounts. It's the same amount, $33,785. But now, what else do we have that affects owner's capital is the withdrawal account. So now we are going to have to close the withdrawal account because it also is temporary. It is used to calculate what the ending owner's equity is at the end of the month. So now we have in our adjusted trial balance, we have a $200 debit with reference to the withdrawals. And so now we are going to credit withdrawals and that will make us um, we're close I'm sorry we're closing this out to capital so we will be debiting capital for the withdrawals and that makes sense because it's going to reflect what our ending owner's equity balance should be so let's look at that here we have the debit to capital and the credit to withdrawals debit to capital and we can see the ending balance now in owner's capital is 33585 and we know that's what it should be from the statement of owner's equity. And we can see the withdrawal account, which is also a temporary account, has been balanced to zero. So what are our temporary accounts? All revenue accounts, all expense accounts, as well as the withdrawal account. And so now here we see that our ending owner's equity agrees to what's in the general ledger. And what's on the balance, I mean, what's on the statement of owner's equity, did I say that wrong? Anyway, what's in the general ledger now is reflective of what's in statement of owner's equity as well as what's on the balance sheet. So let's just look at it one more time. This was our adjusted trial balance. These were all the entries and how they were run through the T accounts. And so now what do we have? We have just the remaining accounts, the post closing trial balance accounts, which are what? These are all the balance sheet accounts. So they will be all assets, all liabilities, and ending owner's capital. So we can see the balance sheet amounts are the only ones that are remaining on the post-closing trial balance. All of the other temporary accounts, withdrawals, revenue, and expenses have been closed.